What's up YouTube? Omar here coming at you with a late video. It is 12.03 on Friday night or I guess I should say Saturday morning. I'm coming at you with my week 2 college football preview. I have a new format for my previews, kind of like my wrap ups. There's my notes. But first, the no notes section, the picks for the top 25 teams. So we start off with number 2 Oregon at Virginia. Uh, Virginia played really well against BYU in week one, but I don't care. Oregon wins. San Diego State business number three, Ohio State. Ohio State all over them. We'll get back to that game later. Uh, South Carolina State visits number four, Clemson. Clemson wins. San Jose State at number five, Stanford. Stanford wins. In my opinion, the game of the week, number six, South Carolina at number 11, Georgia. I know they did me wrong last week. Oh, by the way, my picks last week, not that I'm saying it's it's hard because it's very easy this time of the year to pick top 25 games, but um, last week I was 19-3. and three. My mess-ups were Georgia, my UL Lafayette pick for the upset, and oh, there's one more. Oh, Oregon State. All right, continuing on, I think Georgia's going to win. I'm sticking with them, uh, but we'll get back to more of that game later. Number nine, Texas A&M hosting Sam Houston State. That's a win for them. East Con Eastern Kentucky at number eight, Louisville. Louisville wins. UAB at number nine, LSU. That's a win for LSU. Uh, my main upset pick of the week. Actually, no, my second most upset pick of the week. Number 12, Florida at Miami. The U wins the game. That's right. We'll get back to that one later once again. Number 13, Oklahoma State at UTSA. Easy for Oklahoma State. The uh, college game day game. Number 14, Notre Dame at number 17, Michigan. Expect Michigan to run away with this one. Number 15, Texas at BYU. I have Texas. West Virginia at number 16, Oklahoma. I have Oklahoma. Syracuse at number 19, Northwestern. I have Northwestern. Tennessee Tech visits number 21, Wisconsin. I pick Wisconsin. Southern Miss at number 22, Nebraska. Southern Miss is so bad. I have Nebraska. Buffalo at number 23, Baylor. I have Baylor. Southeastern Louisiana at number 24, TCU. I have TCU. And my main upset pick of the week, Washington State at USC. Give me Washington State in a shootout. Now, let's get back to some of the notable games that I picked. Some of the crazy picks. We'll start with the uh, South Carolina-Georgia game. Why do I think Georgia's going to win? Now, don't get me wrong, I do think Clowney is going to step his game back up and not be the shadow of himself that he was last week against North Carolina. However, that being said, Georgia will still be able to run the ball with Todd Gurley, and I expect after a week of jitters and a hard practice week most likely, Aaron Murray will come out more confident. He'll be at home with a huge Georgia Bulldog crowd, and I think the Bulldogs will just be too much in between the hedges for South Carolina. Moving on to the next notable game that I picked. Aha! Miami upsetting Florida. This is why I think so. We saw Miami, a Miami offense that was expected, okay, some expected, including myself, for the game against Toledo, totally, it'll be a tough task for them. But everyone expected it to be a shootout. That offense was only able to put up 24 points against Toledo. Now, that normally that wouldn't be a bad sign because Miami does not have a good defense at all. But 24 points will not even come close to keeping up with the Miami offense. I think Duke Johnson, the do-it-all guy for Miami, go, runs wild on Florida. And Miami, um, and Miami picks up a huge win. Uh, next notable game, we have Notre Dame at Michigan. Number 14 at number 17. Notre Dame's not the same. They struggled with Temple way more than we would have thought. And Michigan is solid. I love Devin Gardner. I love their defense. They looked really good in their game against Western Michigan, which is not a big-time opponent, but still. Um, let's see, another notable game. Texas and BYU, some people have been picking that. Same with West Virginia and Oklahoma as an upset. I didn't really pay much attention upset-wise to those either of those games, so I'm going to skip those. Aha! Last one to talk about, Washington State at, T at USC. Um, again, this is a case of USC's offense looking really bad against a bad defense in Hawaii, 
and Washington State's offense is going to be too powerful for USC to play that badly again, and I don't see it getting much better. The quarterbacks are just not good for USC, and it's no use having Marquise Lee and all those weapons if you can't get the ball to them. The only way USC wins this game is if their secondary steps up and slows down the Washington State air raid. All right, so now get into the scripted here uh, the segment, part of the segment now, the new part. I'm going with the good player and the bad player. Now the way this is going to work is I'm going to play. I'm going to pick a good player, a player that's going to have a big week in both a non-legit game and a legit game. Meaning, if someone's playing an FCS opponent or a sucky opponent. That's non-legit. If they're playing a good enough opponent, good enough for my standards, I, it's going to be a legit game. I'm also going to have players that are going to have a bad week, a tough week. And that's going to be in a non-legit game and a legit game, a competitive game and non-competitive game, in my opinion. Then I'm going to have the player of the week, who I think it's going to be. And I'm going to have three guys who I, think's ho- who I think their Heisman stock will go down and three guys who I think their Heisman stock will go up stock market report. So we'll start with the good players for the week and we start in a non-legit game Braxton Miller going up against San Diego State University. Why is Braxton going to have a big day? Okay, Buffalo actually has a good defense and he didn't do that great but still had a good day. San Diego State's defense last week gave up 40 points to Eastern Illinois an FCS squad that they paid to play them. Braxton's going to be all over this offense. Expect big points, big numbers, big yards, big everything. It's going to be a king size day for Braxton Miller. And my player to have a big week in a non, in a legit game, Todd Gurley. I know what you're thinking. Oh my, what are you saying? South Carolina's line is good. Yeah, so is Clemson's. And Todd Gurley quietly had a great game against Clemson in the loss. Expect a big game in a win this time. 150 yards and two touchdowns would not surprise me. And that's big time against the South Carolina defense. Now my players are gon- that are going to have a bad week. And don't scream when I say the name. In the non-legit game, DeAnthony Thomas. <gasps> don't scream. Don't scream. Virginia is who they're going up against, which is not going to be competitive. But let me say this. Virginia is a defense that gave up 16 points last week to BYU which is a struggling offense, but still, DeAnthony Thomas wasn't as big in the offense as maybe people would have thought in week one. It was more Mariota spreading it to his receivers and running it with his feet. I expect Mariota to have another big game, but DeAnthony Thomas, I think, is going to be put on the back burners for this one. And my player to have a bad game in a legit game, Tommy Reese, quarterback of Notre Dame, has no idea what he's getting himself into. Had a tough week last week against Temple, but pulled through. This week, not so much. The hammer drops. Expect at least two picks from Tommy Reese. Uh, okay, back to the top. The team who's going to have a great game in a non-legit game. Now, this is easy to pick. I could pick between so many teams, but I'm going with Louisville this week. They're going up against Eastern Kentucky. They had a great game last week against a non-legit opponent, and they're going to put more work in this week. Um, As for my team that's going to have a big game and a legit game, Michigan. This is the game day game, and I think it's a big time for them to prove that they're better than Notre Dame and better than a lot of people think, and I think they're going to do just that. My team to have a bad game in a non-legit game is Baylor going up against Buffalo. I still think they'll win, but I don't think that the Baylor offense will be as good as it usually is because Buffalo's defense, as they proved against Ohio State last week, can hang, maybe holding the 40 points, and you know Baylor's defense is not even close to as good as Ohio State's. And my team to have a bad game in a legit game, Florida. That's right, Miami's going to show your defense what it's... What it can and can't do all day long. Duke Johnson all over your D. And yeah, that's it for that part of the segment. Now, the Heisman, I mean the Heisman stock market. Here we go, folks. Start with the three. The three men that are going to go down in stock. Number three, Lake Seastrunk, running back for Baylor. Had a big week last week, which shot him up the boards. But he's going to stall for a little bit. I still expect him to have a big game because he is a very talented running back with a very talented offensive line. But Buffalo has the tools, a.k.a. Khalil Mack. Um, 
at linebacker to slow his progress a little bit this week. Watch for his Heisman stock to go slightly down. Number two, the long, long, long shot Heisman hopes will end for talented, don't get me wrong, very talented linebacker of BYU, Kyle Van Noy. No one is going to win the Heisman as a long shot when your team starts 0-2 in non-conference play, which I think they will, and David Ash throws the ball over, over your defense. Sorry, Kyle Van Noy. Not this year. And my number one player to go down in Heisman stock this week is Charles Sims, the running back from West Virginia. Last week burst onto the scene as the only functioning piece in West Virginia's offense with 120 yards and a touchdown against William & Mary. Dun, dun, dun. The fun's over, kid. You're playing an Oklahoma defense this week that gave up zero, that's right, zero, zero points last week. You will not be running anywhere, and neither will your offense, and neither will your team. You're going to lose, and you're going to have a bad day. Bye-bye, Charles Sims, weak Heisman hopes. And the three men that are going to go up in stock. Now, I ho I usually hope to keep as most, if not all, of these guys in this certain category, in the in this week and in the future, guys that are playing in somewhat legitimate games, not against FCS. But I did put a guy who's playing in a non-legitimate game, and for that, forgive him. Number three... I mentioned his name, David Ash. People don't realize that he was sling, sling, slinging the ball last week for Texas, and he's going to do all the same against BYU. Oh, your defense is great. Your defense is great. Watch what David Ash does to you tomorrow. Number two, I'm sorry I had to pick him, even though he's playing a non-legit game, Braxton Miller. His numbers are just going to be gigantic. I would not be surprised to see him in the top three, if not the top two, if not the top. Heisman candidate after next week, after this week. And number one, to go up in the Heisman candidacy, number one, a guy I think that should start, should have started the year a little bit higher than he did. Duke Johnson, running back, everything man for Miami is going to go, as I said a million times in this video, all over Florida's defense tomorrow. I believe that game's at noon. So in Less than 12 hours, Duke Johnson will be scampering around the field. Oh, it's been a long video. And finally, to conclude, my player of the week, can I mention his name enough, Braxton Miller. Watch out scoreboards, watch out stat lines, watch out newspaper box scores, watch out everybody, because San Diego State's defense is pitiful, and Braxton Miller is a Heisman candidate. Once again, the Huskies have a bye week this week, but go dogs! We want to know. We'll sit and watch, like I will. There's a guy on the Giants, Usmero Petit, who had a perfect game through eight innings, and I'm gonna go watch that. Enjoy the rest of your late late night. Enjoy your weekend. NFL preview for Week One picks coming tomorrow, most likely with my friend Lewis, who you've seen before, to make the picks along with me. See you tomorrow.